is the show of all shows. We show you the people behind the shows. You get to feel their pose and know what makes them tick. And of course, it's Black Drum Creative Up. Today on the show, Matthew Simpa sits with Alex Enyeho. Don't go anywhere, guys. My name is Koinsola Kuku, and we'll be right back. Uh, today with me on Black Drum Creative Hub, I have a fine gentleman, a creative ambassador who has represented Nigeria all over the world, you know, gone to Europe, the Americas, and name it. He is a filmmaker, a journalist, and the vice president of the International Federation of Film Producers Association. He is also involved in local guilds and associations. And he has produced and directed so many movies, we can't begin to count them on this show. So today, I am here with Alex Enyeho. Please, welcome Thank to you. the show. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks for having me. All right. So um, I went through your bell data, and I see that it's quite an intimidating thing. How did you get to uh, come this far? Well, I, I, well, I started like every other practitioner. Okay. I, after my youth service, sometime in 1996, I came into the industry, and uh, I wanted to just be an actor. Okay. <laughs> then, but uh, later, I quickly realized that I'm better off a behind the camera person. So I went into, I got mentors, you know, in the industry, the likes of Joe Dudu, Zeb, and the rest of them, and uh, I, I learned the rope, particularly through my brother and friend, Joe Dudu, uh, what it takes to be a producer, to be a director, and all of that, and uh, within a short while, and also being, my background being mass communication, and uh, I was able to cash up, and uh, before long, I started doing my own thing, and at times in collaboration with Joe Dudu, who was my mentor, technical mentor, as you, if you will. And uh, from there, I also got involved in the politics of the industry, okay. administration of the industry, deals and associations. And uh, I, rose, I rose to become General Secretary of Association of Movie Producers, later President of Association of Nollywood Corp Producers, ANCOP, and currently the BOT Chairman of ANCOP. And uh, internationally, ANCOP became a member of the International Federation of Film Producers Association, FIAP, uh, from where I was elected in 2013 as the first ever African to be the vice president of that uh, body, which is the equivalent, and in fact, is what FIFA is to the game of football, wow. is what FIAF is to, the, to film producing okay. at global level. Okay, okay, okay. It was founded in 1933, and I became the first African, not first Nigerian, first African, to be the vice president of that body. That's quite impressive. And I'm still occupying that position till date. Wow, that's quite impressive. I think it goes to uh, show that Nigerian films and filmmakers are appreciated beyond the borders of Nigeria. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, FIAP, how is FIAP working together with local guilds and associations to help develop our own uh, local industry? Yeah, uh, the, the, the core of uh, FIAF, apart from the fact that it is FIAF that uh, 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 regulates international film festivals globally. Okay. They more or less license international film festivals, be it all the A-list film festivals, Cannes, Berlinale, AFM, all, it is, you know, they are under uh, FIAF's regulation. Uh, apart from that, uh, the core of FIAF is advocacy for the benefit of producers globally. Uh, they looked at the, the interest of producers, be it the copyright issue, be it funding issue, be it even local politics with your government, you know, because it is countries that become members of FIAF, mm -hmm. but through the platform of a producer's association in that particular country. In this case, Nigeria became a member of FIAF through the platform of ANCOP, Association of Nollywood Corp Producers. So, uh, so far we've had uh, FIAF, uh, the, the, the top members and executives of FIAF had come to Nigeria on three occasions uh, when we started annual FIAF ANCOP 
joint uh, uh, conference you know, on different topics, diverse topics, and uh, you know, co-sponsored by FIAF. And uh, uh, those conferences were very value-adding to producers particularly and other members of the industry, directors, cinematographers, and the rest of them. So they've partnered with us uh, for three years. Uh, you know, it was meant to be an annual event, but it, we ran it for three years. And they came fully and uh, very supportive. And also in terms of information sharing, they share information with us and uh, with local uh, members and uh, in any issue as far as it relates to, to filmmaking, whether it's copyright, whether it's distribution, whether it's piracy, whether it's everything, anything. They, they share information and uh, it helps to put us up to speed on happenings locally and internationally. Okay, away from that. Now, you are very learned, you know the law, but uh, it would appear that a lot of people who are making films don't know they arise from left. I'm sorry to use that. Something just came up uh, while going through one of the WhatsApp group to which I belong. Somebody asked a question about uh, the legality of using Nollywood by practitioners. He said that a certain opera has gone, had gone in 2013 to trademark or to copyright Nollywood. And of course, anybody who uses Nollywood now is actually infringing on uh, the person's copyright. Now, what, what is your take on this? Well, my, my personal take on this, and I've, I've said to when this issue trended in 2013, 2014, uh, well, I was part of the very robust debate. And uh, I was president of ANCOP then. I was still the president then. So the guild heads, we debated it, and uh, we sought legal advice you know, from various legal scholars, and uh, they gave their opinion. And at the end of the first and foremost, uh, Opara, you know, is it Nicholas Opara or something? Uh, he did not register trademark it here in Nigeria. Oh, okay. It's not in Nigeria. Oh. I think it's abroad somewhere. He couldn't have gotten it done in Nigeria anyway. So he got it done somewhere. And he, 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 that trademark is uh, for company. Okay. into advertising, I think marketing, and some yeah. other things, you know. But uh, that's what he registered, Nollywood something something. And uh, for us, our own Nollywood predates of course. what he's doing. And it has its own historical trajectory that can be followed, that is known. And I tell my colleagues, uh, yes, uh, one of uh, the legal opinion we saw told us that, okay, we can approach the court, maybe there or here, to set it aside, to set aside that trademark, uh, this thing. We looked at that option. Of course, it's going to be cost. Uh, yeah, it's it's not uh, particularly maybe if it's not going to be done here in Nigeria. You know, we looked at it and we asked ourselves, how enforceable is this is trademark? Mm -hmm. How enforceable? Even in US, uh, in UK, Europe, and America, how enforceable? We have different events, Nollywood this, Nollywood uh, festival, Nollywood. He cannot stop them. Yeah, there are certain laws that you cannot enforce because this is the brand name. Nollywood is the brand name of the Nigerian yeah, motion the picture industry. industry. Yes, yes. And it just came. We all know the historical tragedy. And you cannot enforce it. You cannot. You cannot. It's just like you trying to hold on to the air. You can't. You can't trap the air. So he has it on paper. He has a trademark. As far as, like I told some people, it's just like a worthless tissue of paper which he cannot enforce anywhere. He cannot stop any practitioner from using that brand name, our brand name, either locally or internationally. Because a lot of people are already using it in France, in UK, in the US. So I, I, don't, I don't see, I don't think it's something uh, practitioners in the industry should lose sleep over. Black Drum Creative Hub, and I'm still with my guest, the Vice President of the International Federation of uh, Producers, Film Producers. Now we've been talking about issues, and like we told you on this program, we'll be trashing out issues and, you know, uh, shedding lights on a lot of them so that 
practitioners in the industry will be better informed and even lovers of Nigerian films will know what is going on. So we are still discussing the issue of somebody copywriting uh, Nollywood and all that. Now, Alex, this issue of somebody copywriting and claiming he owns this and that, I think it's just, uh, you know, brings to the fore the very fact that a lot of us in the film industry are not really taking advantage of the law. We go into deals and, you know, transactions without recourse to the law. Now, how can we stop this and make sure that we have a structure whereby things are legally done? You know, you want to bring an actor onto your show, you have a release, you have documents, a director signs, a, you know, a contract and all those things. How do we go about this? Well, I think first thing is to uh, properly structure the industry. And that is uh, uh, what we are trying to do with the proposed Motion Picture Practitioners Council. Because you have to first structure yourself you know, before you can now engage, even either locally or internationally. Uh, just now, we have plethora of guilds and associations. You know, and all of them register under the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, or most of them. For instance, producers' association, you may have up to 10, 15 producers, different producers' association. But once Mopicon comes alive, you will have one producer association under Mopicon, where every other producer will collapse under. You will have one actor's body, body. one director's body. One, and it's just like our own equivalent of MBA, our own yeah. equivalent of APCON, yes. you understand? We cannot, in my humble opinion, you know, properly do what you have asked if we don't have this structure in place. Because that is the structure that will enable practitioners to self-regulate. It is not the government that is re will regulate Mopicon. It is the practitioners themselves, but with government uh, seal. It, it will be set up by an act of government, of the parliament, you understand. And we need it, you know, because until then, who is like an all commerce, you know, industry where, you know, a lot of things will, will, will happen. People don't know the, the, the importance of uh, producers, particularly don't know the importance of having chain of titles, of signing every contract, contract with every, <laughs> even up to your uh, worker Greeks, class, uh, yes. even up to your uh, PA, you must sign contract with them. It's a whole lot of uh, <coughs> uh, documentation, papers yes. flying everywhere, but you have to do it because if you don't do it, you can't, if you don't have your chain of titles in place, you cannot have any international deal. To start with, you cannot, because that's the first thing they will ask. They want to see your chain of titles, which is all the contract you sign with everybody, all members of cast and crew. Uh, wow. you, you, you cannot. It's not possible. Uh, I hear a lot of people saying uh, Netflix and all of that. They want to, those are some things they will ask. Require. Most films that we do these days, people don't even sign contracts. Yeah. You understand? And uh, that we, we tell when you get to a point. Maybe you just do a film which you didn't take serious and uh, some potentials for international deal. Many people have lost deals like mm -hmm. that. When you not get to that stage, where is your chain of titles? You don't even know what it is to so start with. They'll see you as a very unserious filmmaker. And uh, so Mopicon, Mopicon, Mopicon is the way forward for the industry, uh, or at least the starting point for us to self-regulate and uh, put the industry in proper perspective, then every other thing, you know, shall follow. Now, this Mopicon bill yeah. has been there for quite some time. The gyms have come and gone. Yeah. Now, don't let's go into what is holding it down, but how do you think we can accelerate the process and have the Mopicon bill passed? I think first it's for the, because it's the baby of uh, Nigerian Film Corporation, of course, through the Ministry of Information and Culture. And the current Minister of Information and Culture, Elijah Lai Mohammed, had shown interest during the first tenure of this administration. We set up that committee I talked about. I was a member. We've concluded. We submitted our report. Well, I don't know whatever they said uh, happened to it. Maybe snake or monkey swallowed it. Wow. I don't know. Uh, set up another, another committee again, you know, and that one is still working. I think the most important thing is for the, our, uh, our supervisory minister, 
Alaji Lai Mohammed, the Minister for Information and Culture, to have the political will to drive this home, to give us this Mopiko within the lifespan of this administration. Because he has started it. Uh, it, it, it just takes that will. The industry is ready. We have, we have crossed the T's and dotted the I's. We've done everything. Uh, it's something I was part of. And a whole lot of my colleagues, too, were part of it. The document is there. It's just for the minister and the, those who are running the agency, Nigerian Film Corporation, in collaboration with the industry, to have that will to say, look, this is the time to get it. Take it to the National Assembly, let them debate it, pass it, do, uh, organize a public hearing, we go, and then that's it. It will become law. I don't know what is holding it other than there is no political will on the part of those in government to, to drive it home. Well, uh, I don't know what to say to that because we know how the things work in Nigeria, but I mean, may I chip in that maybe there is, uh, you know, another force, a fifth columnist, that's trying to suppress the bill, maybe for reasons best known to them. Yeah. But then, uh, don't you think if the industry practitioners themselves start a lobby, a very strong lobby, maybe, you know, relate to the press, have, make a whole lot of noise, something would happen. Well, uh, on the issue of lobby, that is going on. It's going on, and that I can tell you. Uh, it's going on, and it's going on very quietly, and we're, we're, we're touching the right places we should go to, uh, speaking to the conscience of a whole lot of people, the political class, the, uh, you know, those in government generally. And, uh, but to, your, to the first concern you raise, the issue of fifth columnists, you, you may not be far from the truth. You understand? I tell you, and I say it with all sense of responsibility, there are some people in the industry, in the industry, who do not want Mopicon to even bet. These are people who have always been taking advantage of this lack of structure, a structure like Mopicon, you know, to go out there, both nationally and internationally, purportedly representing Nollywood and get deals for themselves, for their private companies. Such persons, and there are very few, micro-minority, but powerful micro-minority in the industry. I will not mention names, but they have names. They have big names in the industry. They've done things with their company. <coughs> These set of persons, powerful micro-minority in the industry, will not want Mopicon to see the light of day. And we are aware of that. We know that. And so those are the people I would class as fifth columnists. We know. We know them. We are aware. But God, God passed them. OK, we can only, only hope and pray that truth will prevail uh, at the end of the day. Now, uh, before we round up, let me quickly take you to this uh, area, to the National Theater yeah. that's been concessioned, so to say, to the CBN and some other banks like that. Now, how will this impact on the industry? How will it help the practitioners of uh, you know, creative arts? Well, we, some of us have sought to, 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 for information to know exactly you know, how it will impact positively or negatively on the industry. Because the National Arts Theatre is an edifice. You know, it, it's our pride. You know, be it you operating in the motion picture industry or the live theater, you know, performances, no, even stage, the fine arts, know, or the fine arts, you know, like me, I, I, I'm in both. I, I, I stage at least one or two plays every year. Every year. Uh, it's my passion. So the National Arts Theater, it's one place that is very dear to the creative industry. And if you have, you know, concessioned it, I don't know if it's concession or sold you know, to these uh, <laughs> group bank bankers. <laughs> I don't know. But from what I gather is that the theater itself, you know, will only be rehabilitated and all of that. It will still be there. But the other... Serving the... Uh, purpose. Yes, it's serving okay. the, the purpose. It is. I hope yeah, so. I hope so. I, I, otherwise, if they just hand over everything to this corporate uh, world, the bankers, and uh, it may rub off negatively on the industry. It may now become out of reach of practitioners for the usage. And it may become very expensive you know, to, to assess. And I hope, I hope, I hope those 
were up there who planned all these, you know, had their heads properly screwed on their necks before, you know, uh, putting a pen on paper to sign this, the, to sign it out. So, for the National Theatre, we can only hope that profits and profiteering will not be the, you know, uh, driving or the motivation of those who are taking over the place because it's been an edifice. I remember in those days, back in the days, it was home to every artist. I, you know, frequented that place as many people did. We don't want to lose that place. Now, away from that, uh, Alex, uh, the FIAP, how can other practitioners in the industry benefit from FIAP? I know that ANCORP is involved, but like those who are not involved, how can they get involved? How are you trying to get them involved? Well, uh, what we do first and foremost uh, so that we, we know FIAP is it's, 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 it's a body for producers. And thinking globally is that this is the producer that is the captain of the ship, the ship of any production. It is the producer that employ every other person from director to the A-list actors to the PA to the biggest person in the crew is the producer. He owns the film, as it were. So, and that's why it is taken seriously at that level. So it's a body for producers, uh, for the benefit of producers globally. You understand? And uh, for me, as the vice president for Africa, the FIAF, uh, what I do, you know, because I sit uh, there and I have access to information as it affects producers and uh, as it affects the industry, be it on copyright issue, be it on, uh, like, I, 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 I was very much involved in these uh, various treaties that the NFC signed, you know, <coughs> the treaties that have been signed since uh, the time of uh, General Babangida, but was only ratified some years yeah. back, you know, okay. after so much call and all of that. So in terms of advocacy, the, that is what we do, sharing information with the industry of what is happening globally. Uh, in the film sector, particularly as it uh, affects uh, production and producers. And uh, we share this information. Like I said, FIAF and ANCOP uh, did uh, events at least three years running okay. here in, in Lagos State. And uh, it was uh, a massive turnout from the industry. And uh, it was uh, the, the late Eferi Ozako, uh, you know, anchored one of, one of the event. People, the likes of Professor Bankwale, Shodi okay. and the rest of them, it's always packed for the three years it held. And it, 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 it was good. So those are some of the uh, benefits of belonging to, to, to uh, FIAF. And also, you know, it exposes you to various international film festivals, uh, you know, makes you almost seamlessly get access to accreditation of, for these festivals and get your visa seamlessly and, and, and all of that, you know. So th those are some of the things, uh, you know, that, that the industry generally, apart from producers, you know, benefit from uh, Nigeria's membership of uh, FIAF through the platform of ANCOP. Okay, thank you so much. We haven't got all the, but I just want to take uh, this one more question. And it's because you mentioned Professor Shodipo. Now, the, the new village headmaster yeah. that has been produced by uh, Wale Adenuga, uh, I think it, it, this same professor is the legal advisor or the counsel yeah. to the estate of uh, ambassador, late Ambassador Sheikh Shola. Shola. Yeah. And then they've got an injunction to stop anything being done on the project. Do you think this is right, and how will it impact on the industry generally? Well, uh, for me, my both parties, incidentally, uh, uh, are people I know. The late uh, Ambassador Lushola was married to uh, an auntie, which we call Sissi wow. Clara. Okay. It's my auntie, you know, as I check with my man. <coughs> so, uh, her late ambassador was my in-law, as it were. 
His lawyer, Professor Bai, called the Shodipo, we've come a long way, we've done so much thing. Uncle Wale Adenuga, on the other side, is a very most senior colleague in the industry. He's like a father figure to some of us. So I thought, I thought, uh, seriously speaking, that they will have, you know, crossed their T's and properly dot the I's before getting to this stage. You understand? They will have done all the necessary due diligence, you know, before getting into this stage to avoid this sort of embarrassment. And so, but I believe, I strongly believe, I suspect very strongly that uh, this whole thing will end up in an out of court, out of court settlement. Uh, settlement issue. I don't think they will go the whole hog, you know, and I think there is a breakdown of communication somewhere, somehow, and I believe very strong, strongly, looking at the parties involved, that they will sort these things out, uh, out of court, uh, for the benefit of the, of the industry. Okay, like they say, anything that you, that is in court, when you comment too much on it, it's subjudice, right? Yes, so you can't say too much about it. Absolutely. Ah, well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you on the program, and you have opened, you know, a whole lot of vista. And I hope that this will be of benefit to filmmakers out there. It's what we intend doing on this program, shedding light on so many things that people don't know about, so that we can have a better industry. We want a structured industry. We want an industry that can stand head and shoulder with other industries. We are number three in the world. We should, just, we should not just be number three in name. We should be number three in every ramification. And I believe that with the likes of uh, Alex here and every other well-meaning people in the industry, we surely get there. Once again, thank you for coming. Thank you, Matthew, for having me. Before the show goes to an end, you know we have to give you the latest news and scoops from the creative sphere. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. The sexual scandal involving Olariwaju James Omiinka, popularly known as Babai Jesha, continues to dominate the social media as he faces a possible life sentence. The Lagos state government has brought up a five-count charge of rape and sexual assault on a minor against the embattled actor, while some of his colleagues, like Iyabo Ojo, have mounted pressure to have him convicted. However, Popular comedian and Instagram sensation Abimbola Olasunbo, popularly known as Sir Koro, has alleged that comedian, princess and Nollywood actress Iyabo Ojo deliberately set up and battled Yoruba actor Olariwaju James, popularly known as Baba Ejesha. Reacting to the video of the scandal circulating on social media, Sir Koro, who expressed displeasure over Baba Ejesha's act, raised the following salient points on the allegations. He said, I do not support Baba Ejesha. Let me clear that air. But I want every man to know that no man is a free man. When the home is empty, everyone is a thief. There is a secret behind all of these dramas, especially with Iyabo Ojo's insistence on pursuing the case to the letter. Do you know that Iyabo Ojo has been raped before? Please don't be offended, Auntie Iyabo. It is because I know how pained you are over the matter. The secret about Auntie Yabo's rape is also known to Baba Ejesha and it is top secret and this is why Auntie Yabo feels offended. Princess and Baba Ejesha have very intimate relationship for many who don't know. They are dating themselves. According to Sir Koro, Princess and Auntie Yabo are very good friends. It was when they spoke about it that they decided to confirm and set Baba Ejesha up. Sir Koro further buttressed his point saying, CCTV was not used in setting Baba Jesha up. All those who have CCTV cameras, either at home or office, is it fixed to the ground level? The two men that were seen leaving in the video were the ones who came to set the 60D camera. CCTV does not pick up voice, but this particular camera picked their voice conversation. You will see in that video that the girl was the one who made the first move towards Baba Jesha. Then he made advances to and embraced her. Sir Koro further questioned why the girl was stationed to sit in the same spot even when she left to get something, adding that it was a planned setup. He made a strong allegation that Princess had aborted a baby for the girl and that was what brought the matter out. That wraps up today's episode of Black Drum Creative Up. I hope you enjoyed every bit of that interview. Next time, my name is Kwan Koko, and you can also hit me up on Instagram at Koko Talks. Remember to join us same time, same place. 
This is Black Drum Creative Hub.